Well, good morning, folks. We haven't done a TAT in a while, this and that. So I'm going to get started on it right after this. Hey! Oh, Rocket Chick Roger! Hello there! So I got a few things I want to talk to you about today, okay? We talked about I haven't done a TAT in a while. I don't remember what the number of was the what the number was of the last one. Um, but who cares? <laughs> I have a friend that came to town last week or a week before last, and he wanted to buy a motorcycle. So I took him to a local shop here that's here in Monta. Uh, Here's the pictures from it. You can see here. They, the main bike they sell is the Royal Enfield, which I think is a really cool little motorcycle. It's made in India. Seems to be a pretty popular motorcycle around Ecuador. It's actually, it's a pretty popular motorcycle around the world. If you look at one of Itchy Boots' last videos, she does a, a feature where she kind of reviewed one of the, the hybrid uh, Royal Enfield Motorcycle, a really cool looking off road, on road, uh, cruising, touring type motorcycle that you would use in a country like this. I think that if I was going to buy a bike here, this would probably be my choice. They're not that expensive and they've got a great reputation. And I mean, when you drive around Monta, you see a lot of motorcycles here. The little scooters, the little Shenway, Shenway or something like that, Chinese made motorcycle, there's the Ranger, there's the, I've seen Suzuki's, there are some Hondas here, but they're all little small CC motorcycles. My friend happened to buy a little Aprilia, it's not a, I wouldn't call it a motorcycle, it's a more of a scooter, great for running around town on, and if I get a chance, I'll do a, some video on it when he gets it out and starts riding it around town. It's a little 160 cc motorcycle. Uh, here's a picture of it, and kind of a slick looking little thing. I, I, me personally, I, I prefer to have a, a big of a bigger, a bit of a bigger bike. You know, uh, back home I rode Honda Goldwings, and I also had a BMW uh, K1600 GTL big touring motorcycle but anyway that's it for motorcycles the next thing i want to talk about is uh iptv i don't know if i want to get into this or not it's a very complicated subject and i, I iptv let me just start off by saying iptv yeah it has to do with television but people misunderstand it iptv is a protocol that's used <clears throat> for delivering television signals via the internet. <clears throat> IPTV stands for Internet Protocol Television and it's just one of the components that you have to have it's, uh, in order to have internet television. So you think, oh, well, so what, Don? I mean, well, what's cool about IPTV is that I don't care where you live in the world, you can have television programming from any country you want that you want to choose from. I've used, I've watched most all American programming, all American news, sports, documentaries. I, I don't really pay much attention to network television like ABC, NBC, CBS, but I watch mostly American sports and news, okay, because I like to keep up with what's going on, and I watch Al Jazeera, and I like to keep up. But anyway, back to IPTV. I want to explain. People come to me and say, oh, help me set it up, you know, and I want to help them set it up. But I tell you, folks, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to set it up. It's, you don't set up IPTV. You actually use the protocol to take delivery of an Internet-based television service. Now, in my case, I use a, a service. Well, let me let me back up a minute. There's three main components. You have to have the protocol. You have to have a player on your TV or your Fire Stick or whatever streaming device you have. You can do it on a computer for that matter. 
and you have to have a player. I use TV Mate, T I V I M A T, just like you see right here, and and then you ha you have to have a subscription, okay? And that's your playlist. That's called a playlist, and so and you have to subscribe to it. And there's here's just a small list of them right here that I found just doing a simple Google search to see what's available out there. I have a service that I use that one of my subscribers uh, has gifted to me. As long as he's got it, I guess I have it. And I'm thankful for that. I appreciate him for that. He, he has, he's able to share his connection with me. A lot of the IPTV services that are available today, they claim they won't let you share your service. Meaning, and, and the way, and the way you'll know that is you can see it in their pricing plans, which by the way, can be anywhere from $10 a month to $50 a month, depending on how many television services you want and how many TVs you actually want to hook up to it. Uh, one of the services that I use, they actually ask for the MAC address for your device, and I never gave it to them, and I was still able to sign up for it. So anyway, I'm going to put a link in the description to a website that I found called softwaretestinghelp.com, and they give you a lot of information about how all this works. And so if you're here in Ecuador and you want to watch American programming or Canadian programming or you're from Australia or the UK, you can actually get it here. I do want to say there is a bit of a caveat to it. You need a good internet connection. Now, a, a lot of the services, I used to have a service here called Magis, M-A-G-I-S. I hated it because I'd be watching it and it would start circling. It would freeze, and there'd be a circle in the middle of the screen where it's buffering. And then a lot of times, it would buffer and then play the scene over again. And it would just sit there and keep repeating. And I kept writing to my guy and saying, hey, man, I'm having all kinds of problems. And he would do something, I don't know what, and it would work again for a while. I, I didn't... I, I'm not, I'm not here to endorse any particular service or to badmouth any particular service, but I wasn't happy with Magis. It didn't work well for me. Uh, I use Sapphire. Sapphire is a service that I am subscribed to that my friend provides for me, and it works great for me. But there's, I'll put this link in the description. You can do your own research. If you don't understand it and you want to get more information about it, Google it, okay? If you're here in Monta, and if you buy me a breakfast or a cup of coffee and you need some help setting it up, let me know. I'll be happy to help you with it, but there are some things that you need to know. You need to know your network password, your network access that you, to your network, and your password, and you need a computer or a laptop, okay? So that we can, don't expect to do it all from your phone. You can if you want to, but don't ask me to help you. I'm not going to screw around with that. And if you don't know your password, I'll just say bye-bye. And when you get that crap figured out, let me know. People, write your passwords down. Come on. I mean, I don't... If you're in an office environment, you can put a post-it note on your screen, have your password. They say don't do that, but no. Get you a little black book or something. Or get you a secure note on your phone and put your damn passwords in it so that you know what they are when you have to look them up. Don't expect me as an IT guy to know what your password is. Okay? You got it? Write it down. I wrote in my notes here, more on culture. I think I've said enough about culture. You know, a lot of people, I, the, the video that I did recently about the culture here, particularly here in Monta, got a lot of great response from it. Lots of good comments. I only got one or two that told me that, you know, if I don't like it, leave. And they are no longer subscribers to this channel. They may think they are, but they're, they're not going to find it anymore. And uh, that's fine. I mean, you... You can tell me that all you want to, but don't insult my intelligence by telling me if I don't like it, leave. Uh, I'm not here to fix this culture. 
And I'm not here to bitch about it. I'm just here to tell you about it, okay? That's the whole premise behind my channel is to tell you what it's like for me, you know? Uh, but I thank you for the comments. I got several interesting comments from people, both Ecuadorians and North Americans, about their culture. And if I would encourage you, if you want to know more about their culture here, go through and read some of the comments, okay? And you'll, you'll find out some stuff. Sex perverts in Ecuador. Sex perverts. Guys, single guys, get the hell out of here. Don't come here thinking that every young Ecuadorian woman you see is going to lay down and spread her legs open for you because you got a little bit of cash. You know, I'm sick of hearing about this. And I keep meeting these assholes that want to, they, I don't know, why do they seek me out? You know, if you're a pervert and you want to come to Ecuador and chase young women, that's your business, but keep it to yourself. And if you come here and you meet a young Ecuadorian woman and you knock her up and get her pregnant, you're not going to have a good life, in my opinion, especially if she's young. I'm talking about you guys that are in your 60s and 70s and want to come here and find a 30-year-old girl. You know, that's your business. You do that. But don't bring it to me. Don't introduce yourself to me. And for everybody that wants to know, if you're a single guy and you come to Ecuador, do me a favor. Don't ask me to meet you for a cup of coffee because I've met too many of these creepos that are single guys that are coming here to this country for one purpose, and that's sex tourism. I don't want to meet you. I don't want to meet you. One of the first guys that I met, I asked him what was his business in Ecuador, and he picks up his phone and tells me, well, I'm a pervert. The guy was 77 years old from Pennsylvania. He tells me he's a pervert, and he starts showing me pictures of women that he's been with in the different bordellos throughout the country. That's about all I'm going to say about that. Uh, matriculation. My good friend Ace Maldonado, GM Ace, right, here's a link to him right here. Uh, I'll put some more information in the, in the description. Good friend of mine lives in Puerto Viejo. He's also a YouTube influencer with a very fast growing channel. He's a young man, he's in his 30s, the mid 30s, smart, educated, uh, lived in the United States most of his life, and now he's here and he's has a pretty good channel. And he decided to do a video about the matriculation process. That's the process of getting your car registered. For those of you that are interested in owning a car here, you're going to need to know this process. And let me tell you something, folks. We use me as a model, my car as a model to go through this process. And here's a link to the video right here and I'll put it in the description as well. Go to his channel and watch this video. I, I, I watched this video yesterday and realized that what a big, fat, ugly slob I am and I really hate seeing myself on video unless I'm just looking right in the camera. But anyway, Ace did a great job on this video explaining the process. I want you to know it's in the United States, at least in Arizona, when you go to get your car inspected for your license plate, it's a matter of driving into a drive through They stick a probe up your exhaust pipe, tell you to start the engine, and, you know, they hook a couple things up under the hood. And basically, all they're doing is checking your emission for impurities or whatever. And here, it's not like that. They inspect your car. And it really makes me wonder how some of these damn cars that you see on the road here ever make it through this in process. There's a couple of things they did to my car that I see some vehicles and think that they got up on that platform that I drove up on. There wouldn't be much left of that car when they got through checking it for loose parts and stuff like that. They literally shake the car from underneath. You pull up on a device and... And, man, it's like they, they test everything to make sure your car is not going to 
fall apart. That's probably a good testament to my car since it's a Chinese car. In spite of what all you YouTube and Facebook educated experts say about buying Chinese cars, you're full of shit as a Christmas turkey. Because everybody say, oh, that car's going to fall apart on you. Well, I'll tell you what. If it was going to fall apart on me, it would have fallen apart on me in that inspection station. Just watch the video. You'll see what I'm talking about. Last night, Stella and I and a couple of friends went to a place here called Upolo. And we went to a, a place to eat dinner and listen to some live music. And read Scott Anderson and his blues band played and here's some clips from it. The guy play. I, I used Stella's phone to record these clips, and I think maybe there was some makeup or something smudged on her lens, and that's why it looks kind of the way it does. And I apologize for that, but hey, you know we're a budget operation here, you know, and uh, that's just the best. I had I didn't take my phone with me. Stella took hers, and I used hers to record them. But uh, Reed is a great musician, a guitar player, and he's got. Uh, a couple of great bass players, good drummer, a couple of saxophone players, and one of the saxophone players that's that's featured in my Meeting Your Neighbors Doc Holiday video, Alex, he plays the saxophone and the keyboard, and he plays them both at the same time sometimes. It's incredible. So, but we had a good time. We had some, that, this is just shows you that there, you can have some good entertainment here in Monta. You just got to go, get out and go to them. We stay there till almost 10 o'clock when it's way past my bedtime and we um you know we had a good time so keep that in mind for when you come here so anyway that's it that's for this it for this that really that's it for this tat if you like this channel please subscribe if you like this video smash that thumbs up button if you didn't like it bite me okay and i say that with peace and love see you on the next one ciao ciao